Hey, it's gear time. Today we're going to be unboxing and installing my new Street Guardian dash camera. Stick around. Welcome to the Doug Houston YouTube channel. This is a channel where we help you with tech wherever possible. Today we've got a new piece of kit and it's the Street Guardian dash camera. Models on the screen right now. We're going to be unboxing and installing in the car and then taking it for a whirl. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss any future tech install, unboxing, review, or even the software and tech help videos that we do. Make sure you click the bell so you don't miss anything. Well, let's swing right into the video. Let's get unboxing. All right, first thing we're gonna do is crack open the box. Now it just sort of slides out here like this. And the sticker from Dashcam Owners Australia. That's where I bought it from, for full disclosure. And the box pops open like this. It's the box the other way. First of all, we've got our 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. And then on top here in the bag, we've got the dash cam itself, very quite a compact unit, this uh, Street Guardian. So that's it there. I'm going to pop open the box now and look at the accessories that we get given with this. We've got a bunch of uh, items. I'm just going to pull them out of the box as I come across them. We've got a, a 3M ad adhesive for the um, mount. We've got um, a bit of extra equipment kit here. We've got some cleaning wipes, wet and dry, a little um, USB to uh, the proprietary port on the Street Guardian, a little Street Guardian sticker as well. So this is probably so you can, if you want to plug your unit straight into your computer to offload stuff rather than pull the SD card out, I guess. Probably also for charging via USB, I would imagine. Next we've got the very long um, power cable for the car. You've got your cigarette lighter, 12 volt to the uh, plug. But wait, there's more. First of all, and we've got this mount here. This is like a dash mount. We've got that same type of 3M adhesive, which is already on there. So you can just peel that off and stick that on your dash if that's where you want to mount on your dash, of course. We'll work out the configuration. We'll get to the car later. And we've got the suction option for temp replacement, which is handy. We've got this little tool, which is for um, permanently fixing your cable in uh, across the top of your window if you mount it sort of behind your your rear vision mirror you can you can push the cable in in between the edge of the roof and the edging there this is a little little tool that'll help you push that in i guess and a nice um street guardian bag to keep it in when you're not don't have it mounted because you wouldn't probably leave it mounted permanently uh the heat will get to it and finally the documentation the quick start guide which will tell us how to get this set up so that's basically that's basically what comes in the box let's review what we've got here the camera of course which we will go through and look at how we set that up in the next part of the video which is the setup part um, the important memory card some of the accessories the install install tool the uh, mount options, just a sticky mount, a permanent sticky mount, an extra stair key and a suction cup, and of course your power cable and bag. So that's pretty much it for the uh, unboxing part with the Street Guardian, the, yes, this is the SG9665XS. The next part you'll see in the video will be uh, out in the car and getting it set up. Hey guys, here we are in the car now. We're going to attempt to do an install on the and uh, configuration setup on the Street Guardian. So I've got the camera, I've got some gear here. I've got the long cable, which I'm going to just uh, pull out now. And as you can see, this is the front end of the car. 
I've got a current mount here for my old action camera that I used to mount for dash cam purposes right here. Now we've got to figure out where we want to mount this. Now I've, I decided I'd go with the permanent mount for now. So I just want to see how that clips in first of all so I can get the position incorrect. It looks like it goes in one direction only which is that way and then slides in. I think. Okay we've got that in place. So we're going to be mounting it in that direction, fobbing it off, tightening it up into position um, and then getting that going. Now what we need to set it up and configure it as well. The first thing we want to do is figure out where we're going to put it because we've got to run the ample cable um, however we're going to run it around the top here of the windscreen possibly under here down and around to where the cigarette lighter is so that's what we're going to work on now we're just going to we're just going to plug away here we want to work from where the dash cam is because we don't want any access overhang we want to work our way back to the cigarette lighter which is down in the console here so now we got to figure out i got cleaning cloth wet and dry to um, clean up the window and I've already got the that's stuck i've got my toll tag that's stuck there you know there's one option is one option is that i can just mount it old school like that but there is a limitation on angle there so i'm thinking maybe we can just put it there possibly right behind the revision so it's not getting out of the way you don't need really need to be seeing it and then you would be unclipping it and taking it away if you wouldn't be leaving it in the car you would either put it in, in your console while you're out or taking it with you when you're at home take it inside you obviously need to drop everything off so let's go first of all we want to clean the area maybe use the wet one first let's give it a go Clean the glass with the wet and then we'll use the dry. Oh, the wet is pretty wet. We'll clean the area below where the dash cam. Oh, I just noticed a chip on my window. Fancy that, eh? Guess that's why they give you the extra bits and pieces. That is really wet. It's really wet indeed. I'm just gonna get this tissue and wipe that down a bit. That wet wipe was so wet. Crazy, now we've got a dry wipe, which is more of a, just a, a clean polish. It's just a polish wipe to take off excess water and generally shine up the window, which is good. So I'm doing be just below where we're adhesing it as well, just so the window's clean for, obviously for the camera. So yeah, we've pulled off the adhesive and we're applying it right there that's the best I could we're gonna adjust that part shortly okay I'm gonna let that dry before I stick the camera back on what I'm gonna do is start running this cable yeah you know, just to get an idea let's plug it in as in there so that's gonna mount in there. We'll put, the, we'll put the camera back on. So it needs to mount there. Let's come up into here. Now I can probably push most of this in my fingers. We've got the tool, of course. But I think we'll just give ourselves enough leeway for the camera there. and I'll start pushing this in.
I think where it is now is about the best. I've sort of run it down the door towards the back of the footwell where the carpet ends. You can just sort of loop it under the carpet there. And I've got enough room here to plug it in. So let's just plug that in. Now obviously that's not going to come on because the car's not turned on, but that's fine because um, we're going to be, we have to go and set it up. So what, what I'll do is I'll pull the camera out. We'll go and look up the setup features and plug it in in, in, in a different position where we can sit and uh, go through the setup process on this, on the actual device because it is a tech device of, uh, after all, because what happens is these automatically are turned on, they automatically start recording. So you just have to go through the setting, make sure all of your settings are set right. We need to stick the card in and go through all their settings. So we're gonna cross to that right now and uh, get it set up. All right, here we are. First thing we're gonna do is put the uh, micro SD card in. See if we can figure out which way it goes. It's either be that way or the other way. That's it. Got it the first guy. We're back out here in the car just because to power this up we need to have it actually plugged in to the provided cable. When you use the proprietary USB. I think it only goes into mass storage mode, which means you can't access the menu. So we're going to fire it up for the first time here with the legit power. So here it comes, it's going to start up now. And there we go. I'll try and get that there for you. So now you can see what it does, it automatically goes into record mode. So what we need to do is check all the settings and whatnot there. Um, shoot, are we hit? Okay, we hit, okay, we can stop recording. So all the date and times wrong. So we're gonna go into the menu. And let's start going through the menu here. Oh, hopefully I don't lose the camera too much. Um, so we've got the date and time. So we wanna change that first. We got the time and date settings in, so we're just gonna go back to the menu. Seem to have recorded once I come back out of menu. Okay. Let's go, um, we can see first of all, we've got the format menu, video video size, which is um, 1080p, 30 frames per second, which is be fine. And date, cycle time. Cycle time, let's go and have a look at the options there. Three minutes, five minutes, let's set it for five minutes. Click OK, beep sound on. I'm assuming that's the menu beep as I'm pressing all these buttons. G sensor low. I want that off because I'm not recording motion detection or anything like that. Record audio on, yes. Language English. Video, it's PAL. LCD standby, 60 seconds. Uh, we'll set it for 30. Frequency 50 gigahertz, which is because we're in Australia, that makes sense for our power system. The probably most important thing that this relates to is if you're doing night time and you've got, got um, electrical lights, like street lights and stuff, or traffic lights, they'll seem to flicker if it mismatches. So if you're in Australia, um, areas like that, you need only 50 hertz, whereas in other areas you want it on 60 hertz, so. And there's a reset option, and an about with the firmware version, which is 1.00.08. Um, what I will do is check, um, that's the current firmware, and see if we need to upgrade the firmware on this before we, we get going on it, but we'll uh, give it a go. And we're back to the top. So the settings are quite simple. Um, so that's it. So we hit menu again, we're out, and then it instantly starts to record. So basically, it's a system where it'll auto record pretty much every time you turn your car on. When, when it loses power, you turn your car off, it'll stop recording. So everything's there and in place. So what we're gonna do now is let it run for a minute while I get this cabling sorted out, and we'll come back All right, guys, uh, we've got the new Street Guardian uh, set up recording and I've got my existing um, 
Toshiba, uh, X, Toshiba Camilla X Sports Action Camera, which I've been using as a dash cam probably for the last year, um, mounted on the dash as well. So I'm recording both at the same time. So we can do a, like a side-by-side -side comparison. Both are recording in uh, 1080p. Uh, the Street Guardian is um, 1080p um, 30 frames per second. I think the Toshi set up as the action camera set up as uh, uh, 1080p 25 frames per second, but that's okay. We can still do a side-by-side -side comparison. So we're just going to go for a bit of a bit of a drive in this situation. Just to get an idea, it's um, about four in the afternoon, so the sun's sort of heading in a setting fashion into the west. So we've got a little bit of shadow on the road, so a bit of a bit of a mixed bag there. I want to see how it handles the light. Now, in the manual, the downloaded manual that I got for the Street Guardian says to angle the camera so it's 40-60. Um, so 40%, the top 40% of the screen is sky. The bottom 60% is your road, so your horizon sort of above half, above the halfway mark. So that's the sort of thing they're going for. Um, they say that's best for the way that it handles the light, you know, being overexposed, underexposed. When you put the two shots side by side, you can see on the left the Toshiba Camillo Exports Action Camera. Uh, it, the colors are there that's the action camera so it's a typical sort of uh, shot you'd expect and color sort of set up as an action camera you can see the street guardian is a lot more um, dark a little bit darker and, and a lot more blues in the shot um, so there is a col definite color difference but nothing that you could probably uh, deal with with color correction and don't forget it is a dash camera it is not meant to be a professional video camera by any stretch of the imagination so there it is um, definitely a dash camera definitely a 1080p uh, obviously it's probably going to perform better in the uh, bright of day um, a little bit later I'll probably do some comparisons with nighttime shooting because I know the action camera does get quite grainy in the nighttime and I would suspect that the dash camera might be somewhat similar but we'll look at that another time well i hope you enjoyed today's video we've got a question for you do you have a dash camera and if so have you caught anything interesting whilst out on the roads why don't you share it in the comments below let's have a conversation about that if you enjoyed today's video why don't you give it a thumbs up and if you know anybody that might be interested in dash cameras in general why don't you share this video with them? Send them the link. Go on, I dare you to. And you know what? I want you to click here for more videos on my channel. I want you to click here to check out the channel over at Briz Road Vlog where I actually post my dash cam videos. And don't forget to click here to subscribe. Doug Houston YouTube. This is Doug and I'm out.